All right. So we got Luis Gonzalez out here. We already kind of got into the topic of the young players because Gabby Moreno's came up, and that's like the secret. His, his name is the secret word on this show, where Wolf is just going to go down that path. I, I'll bring up a couple of these other guys, though. You mentioned Alec Thomas uh, earlier. You know, logically, he's the guy that you look at and you're like, well, yeah, if he improves his hitting, I mean, there's there's a jump to be made there. He had some of the biggest moments in the playoffs last year, and, and we had him on out at spring training last week, uh, and, and he brought that up. He was like, you know, going to the first game, I was kind of nervous, struck out three times, and then second game hit a home run, and from there he was kind of like, all right, like you were saying, like, okay, I belong in the postseason. Yeah, and that was huge for him. He had a, a, a good postseason, came up clutch when, he, when we needed him to. His main thing for us was defense, and when we could get something positive out of him offensively, it's it's a huge lift for our ball club, and I think he's starting to hit that stride. He's gotten some big hits here in spring training, starting to swing the bat a lot better, and uh, he he's kind of the, the X-man on the team. You know, like we, we don't know what his, his ceiling is right now. He's getting there. But if he can reach that potential that we know he has, it's going to be pretty special to have a guy like that. We've had some pretty good center fielders that have played here My in the past for the D-backs. And, yeah. and he's another one of those. Because when that ball goes up in the air, sitting from that bird's eye view where we're at, and seeing some of those balls hit, and me being a former outfielder, I'm like, no chance. And then you see him just corral right under it. I'm like, how the heck did he get to that ball? He takes great angles. He knows how to play it, and he's really uh, found a real good niche out there in center field. You know, talking about finding a really good niche, last year, the biggest surprise to me was Geraldo Perdomo. I mean, there's a guy who's an all-star. Yeah. Are you kidding me? This guy uh, seemed to me to come out of nowhere. Now, how do you process Geraldo Perdomo and what you saw from him last year and what you project for this year. Well, he was big for us, hitting ninth in the batting order. It's almost like having a second leadoff guy. He, he started a lot of those big rallies by walks or getting a big hit in the postseason play. And I think, I think for us, he's steady shortstop, plays the game the right way. He's very energetic. He's a vocal kid. He's always having fun in the locker room and things like that. He brings a different type of energy to our team, and everybody loves him in the clubhouse. Tory loves him. Mike Hazen, all of them. He's, you know, he's he always talks about him being a good-looking, good young player. He's <laughs> so he not keeps shy it to light tell everybody he's a good-looking kid. Is that what he kid. said? Is that what he <laughs> oh, said? Yeah. Is that oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Blaze Alexander earlier. Like you look at this roster, and it's it's almost. I mean, even a guy like Jordan Lawler before he got hurt. It's like how are you? supposed to break into this lineup now and yet plays alexander having that spring he had here he's on the on the team and not like he's going to be an everyday starter but even just making this roster as a young position player now is, is pretty impressive yeah i think ideally for him it would have been nice to have him in triple a to get everyday at bats but when you've done what you've done in spring training it's hard to keep a player like you said yeah. off the roster and he's earned his way on here i mean uh, I, I think it would have been a tough call for Tory and Hazen and all those guys to call him in and what do you tell them? Hey, you're going to have to hit 800 next year in spring <laughs> training to make the club? I mean, you know, it, even if he wouldn't have started here, eventually he was going to end up being here before the end of the season, just knowing how much hard work and dedication he's put in to, to get into where he's at right now. Can Corbin Carroll hit 300? Do you I expect think, him to I hit 300? So. I think so. It's hard to do when you're at the top of the batting order. You get a lot of ABs and things like that. But, uh, I mean, he, he is a player who really works hard at his craft. Uh, he's very studious of the game. Uh, he takes care of his body extremely well. He works hard each and every day. Um, you know, I made a comment earlier that he's probably going to eventually, I, I feel personally, that he could be the greatest all-time D-back of all time here, the way he plays the game and what he's done in his first year, Rookie of the Year, and I think he's only going to build off of that. And he's got great character. He's a good character guy, not just on the field, but what he does off the field with his teammates and his family and things like that. So he's a special kid to have in the organization. Can he hit 35 home runs? Oh, yeah. he's He can tap into that power. He's got some power. I think last year he scared us a little bit with the, the shoulder injury a couple times. But uh, he's worked hard to strengthen everything up, and 
uh, the big thing for all these guys, not just him, is just staying healthy. You play a lot of games. There's a lot to be demanded from you. And for him, he's a pivotal guy in our ball club. He's got to go out there and have another good year for us. And we talked to you right before spring training, and we were trying to figure out the answer to that question of, like, what does improvement for Corbin Carroll look like? And you were like, well... I don't know, but he's here before everybody already, yeah. and he's leaving. Did you play with a lot of guys like that when you were in the league, or is that as kind of unique as it sounds? Uh, in today's game, it's a little more unique. Uh, back then, guys were showing up early and staying late. Now it's a little bit different. Guys show up a couple hours before they got bad. Like our team would have already been here two hours ago for a night game just because it's opening day. We're excited. Uh, you know, it's a different generation that these guys are playing in right now. A lot more social media, a lot more coverage of everything that they do. Everything is critiqued on these guys, not just by the media, but uh, social media and things like that. So, uh, you know, for God's sakes, they got guys taking pictures of players walking in and what outfits they're wearing to the yard. Me and Wolf wouldn't have passed that test. We're wearing flip-flops oh and a t-shirt. Oh my goodness, that would have been so bad right there. Speaking of bad, Jordan Lawler broke his thumb. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of setback is this going to be for him? And was there an expectation that he was going to be on the team from the get? Oh, I mean, he was doing well. I think for, for the organization, his probably start time would have been to go back to AAA because Perdomo's right now the shortstop to just get him some more at-bats and things like that. You don't want a young player like him that's very promising. He's going to do a lot for this organization to have him sitting on the bench and just kind of wasting a year away right. where he can be in AAA right now getting better. And he's going to miss a couple months over there, but he, he'll work hard and get right back to where he is. He's a special talent that we have. He played in Dallas for a long, you know, grew up in Dallas. Uh, just, a, just a good, special young player that knows how to play the game the right way, and he's going to work hard to get back to where he was. Gonzo, before we let you go, I want to ask you about Jake McCarthy because he, he looked so good at the end of the 2022 season and like somebody that would really fit in on this team. And then obviously it was an up and down year last year, but he does make the team uh, out of spring training today. What's the next step for him? Well, that's a great question. I mean, you're right. And uh, at the end of 2022, he was he was the man. Yeah. I mean, he had a great finish to that season. Uh, we saw that, uh, you know, he was on the up and up. Then he came back, had a disappointing 2023 for him. He had some, some minor injuries here and there. The talent is... I mean, he's a talented kid. I mean, you look at his football highlights, what he did in baseball and football and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a special breed, the mentality. I think I talked to Wolf and you guys about it. His mentality level is totally different because he's been in the trenches and knows how difficult that is to play football. And then baseball made it might have come a little bit easier. You know, running for a, a baseball in, in right center field is a lot easier than trying to catch a pass knowing that somebody's trying to take your neck off you know trying to knock your block off out there so for him i think baseball came a little bit more natural but uh he's had he struggled a little bit on making those adjustments and i think he'll get back to it he's got to work hard and you're right he made the team now and who's to tell what's going to happen in the next few weeks when some of those guys that were injured are going to come back but for him he knows he's got some work to do and he'll get back he'll get back into form I don't like making predictions of any kind. I really don't. Uh, I think you know that about me. But what about you? He likes how, making other people yeah, make predictions. Exactly. What about you? What, what? What? How many games can this team win? Well, I think we have to be in the high 80s, low 90s to get back into postseason play. And um, it all starts today. And for us, the more games you win early, the the less difficult it is late. I know we always say, oh, it's a sp- you know, it's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, and I always disagree because I say you got to win every game, one game at a time. Because at the end of the at the end of the day, those games you look back in April and May, you're like, oh, we gave those games away. You want to win them all now and try to push that lead as far as you can. Because you know, you play so many games, you're going to have a lull somewhere throughout the season. Yeah, no, that was one of the best things last year is how they bounced back from, from July, which I would assume only helps them now this year. Gonzo, this was great, man. It always is. Yeah, thank, thank you so it, much, buddy. Thanks for having me. We pulled Wolf away, man. He's got a fan club <laughs> out here. People are coming over. He pays those people to come to every oh, show. Is, yeah, is that what it weird. is? Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.